Well, George Franklin is uh, familiar to a lot of us in Battle Creek, having uh, spent a number of years at Kellogg Company, working as a vice president of government relations uh, until 2005, and now announcing recently he will seek the 6th District U.S. House seat currently held by Republican Fred Upton, George running as a Democrat, and he joins us today to talk about that. Good morning, George. Hey, good morning. How's everybody in Battle Creek doing? We're doing okay today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm enjoying campaigning. Uh, back to your comments about, you know, that uh, my, my relationship with Battle Creek is uh, it's kind of my second home. Now, all my years at Kellogg, and then I served for years on the board of Battle Creek Unlimited. Mm-hmm. And then I chaired the College of Aviation Advisory Board, and I also got involved with the food bank. So, uh, yeah, Battle, Battle Creek is a second home to me. So, so why now, then, uh, for this campaign? What what motivates you today? You know, what it boiled down to is I, I want to go to Washington to make a difference, not a new career. Uh, I think people are tired of all the negative campaigning about all the bickering, about the failure of elected officials to cooperate, compromise, and work together. So I'm approaching this campaign. I'm not running against anybody. I'm running for me and what I believe in, what I think I can do. And as I mentioned, this this is not going to be a career. Uh, I'm not for term limits, but I'm for term limits on myself in a sense. You know, I'm going to go do a couple of terms and come home. And uh, I just think people are, are tired of the failure of their elected officials to sit down and, and fix the problems. What is the number one problem, do you think? I think people feel they don't have a fair shot. When you, when you go to Bangor, when you go to South Haven, when you go to Niles, you know, people just sort of feel like the whole system is skewed against them. It's... it's, it's um, they, they, yeah, they just don't have a fair shot. And it's everything from you don't have a fair shot unless you got a decent school to go to. Uh, you don't have a fair shot unless you got health care. You don't have a fair shot if the tax code is skewed against you. Uh, you don't have a fair shot if the environment is not clean and, and livable and you can hunt and fish and enjoy what you're doing in a, in a pristine environment. And, and they just feel like things are a myth. And I think part of the reason for that is, is that, you know, the politicians have spent so much time being politicians, they forgot about the people they work for. They're, they're supposed to they're, they're fix problems, not bicker and worry about getting reelected. So I'm approaching this. To be honest with you, if I got elected, if I'm fortunate enough to get elected, I'm not worried about getting reelected the first day. That, that's not going to be my issue. My issue is going to be and go out call balls and strikes, try to try to call them like I see them. And, you know, if they run me out of dodge, they run me out of dodge, right? Uh, um, but that, that's how I'm approaching this. So when people think they don't have a fair shot, are they right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they are right. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and the reality and the perception are, are, are in sync. Um, we need to invest in our school systems. Public education has been a cornerstone of this country for since its inception. And we, we've neglected it. We don't fund it. We don't support it. I was down in Berrien the other day, and there was an educational board meeting, and it was fascinating to listen to these public school teachers talk about how there's this perception of public schools not being worthy. And, I mean, and they have this image problem they have to overcome. Well, the, the public schools are the cornerstone of how you get ahead in this country. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you don't, have good, don't have good public schools um, or you don't think you have good public schools, you're going to say, well, you know, how do, I, how do I get a shot at this? How do I get to move ahead? So, yeah. Well, I think that, that image issue they may be working with right here in Battle Creek. Yeah. Trying to change yeah, that now. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard in Battle Creek and all the different plans that have been undertaken, and I know that the Kellogg Foundation's tried to do great work there and and uh, community wide efforts and so on. And, and 
you know, I, I strongly endorse that. That's that's what it's going to take to to turn the, the reality and the image around both. So, a I, I guess it's uh, fair to say then that um, there's still some hurdles to jump here, George. Right? I mean, there's uh, there's oh. a crowd of Democrats here, and then whoever runs. Uh, on the Republican yep. side, Fred hasn't announced yet. There's some chatter out there that he might run for Senate instead, but hasn't really talked about that at all yet. Anyway, so there's some work to be done here. Oh, there's, there's plenty of work to be done. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you got to earn this job. you got to go out and tell people who you are and what you stand for and, and what you'll do for them. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of my track record at Kellogg. Uh, I come at this. As I mentioned before, I'm not a professional politician. I'm not becoming a professional politician. My, my life has been in, in the private sector. But my job in the private sector was fix the problem. That, that's what I did. And my job at Kellogg was fix the problem. Um, and, uh, you know, um, so that, that's how I've approached it. And uh, that's how I'd approach being a congressman, fix mm-hmm. people's problems. Does it have? Does it bring some kind of uh, particular perspective, having been a lobbyist uh, as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I know how the system works. I know how to how to make a difference. That's why I think I can go to you know Washington and uh, without making a career of this thing, actually have an impact, make a difference, and then come home. So I, I think it's an experience that. Uh, I can take and use the advantage of the people that live in the 6th Congressional District. You know, um, I think those words are well intended, although folks, as you alluded, are disconnected. They feel the system's rigged against them and so on. Uh, How do you uh, get through that noise and convey the message you want to convey, which is we can fix this? Well, I I think what you need to do is, Go talk to people. Go out and uh, don't talk down to people. I think that's sometimes politicians tend to do, but talk to people and find out really what they're thinking and, and what they want to have accomplished. And as I mentioned before, you need to walk across the aisle and work with Republicans. Uh, there's a, you know, people forget you take the Congress, House, and Senate, it's 535 people from all walks of life and all regions and all backgrounds and all religions. Uh, and you have to compromise to get anything done. You know, I always like to say, what does a cowboy from Montana have in common with a Hispanic from Harlem? Not a lot. Not a lot. But we're all one country. And the, the Congress is designed to necessitate compromise. And my... My life with Kellogg um, was working across the aisle, Republicans, Democrats, whoever, to, to solve the problem. And that, that's how I approach being a congressman on behalf of the people if, they're, if I'm fortunate enough to get elected. Boy, though, it's out of fashion to compromise, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And that's part of the problem. And we sort of morphed into this parliamentary system where all the Democrats vote in lockstep and all the Republicans vote in lockstep. Back when I was a young guy on Capitol Hill, uh, you know, Republicans and Democrats voted for each other, helped each other, worked together. It wasn't this lockstep voting that we've now become where you know, you're, you're, it's uh, taboo to go over and, and vote on the other side. Mm-hmm. But you're not against that. No, I'm for working to compromise. I'm for working together, Republicans, Democrats. That's the only way we're going to solve people's problems. Quit worrying, quit bickering, quit worrying about the quote politics, um, quit worrying about the positioning. Just, just fix the people's problems and, and you know, start with, uh, start with the low-hanging fruit and take it from there. What's an example of low-hanging fruit at this point? I, I'll give you a great one. They're talking about this new tax bill. There is $2.6 trillion of corporate profits overseas. And Corporations don't want to bring it back because they'd have to pay 35 whatever percent tax to bring it back. But it's in the interest of the United States to bring that money back and have it taxed in some form or fashion. Now, I find it hard to believe that Republicans and Democrats can't, you know, I don't know if you want to do a holiday, if you want to do a reduced rate, 
what you need to do is set up a system that encourages companies to repatriate those profits, bring it back, and reinvest it in this country and create jobs. Um, but it's in everybody's interest, whether you're the Treasury of the United States that wants to get some of the money, whether you're a person who wants to create new jobs or a small business that wants to get going, it, it's, it's a win-win for everybody to figure out something to bring that money back. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because uh, one of the uh, foundational differences between Republicans and Democrats is is where the tax breaks should be <laughs> and oh, how yeah, much they yeah. should be. But, so but that one, the repatriation, though, is one back to what I was talking about. It's it's one I think you can get together and agree on. Let's figure out how to bring this money back, get it taxed in some form or fashion, uh, make sure that it's now spent back in the United States. You're going to help the companies. You're going to help the Treasury by bringing in some more revenues, and you're going to help create jobs and business back in the United States. So uh, there are some folks out there, and by virtue of the political climate now, uh, which we have fostered in such a way that, um, you know, we look for the ones who have an R or a D, and we align because we presume to have the same viewpoints then on the uh, on the basics but there are some folks listening probably who just by virtue of knowing that you're running as a Democrat will dismiss you. But yet yeah. your your foundation here is we should work together. So what would you say to them to try and get them to consider you as a as a candidate individually rather than just judging you by the party? Well, I think um, I, I use this all the time. Ed Cox, the former mayor of New York, used to say, if you're with me on 8 to 12 issues, vote for me. If you're with me on 12 to 12, go see a psychiatrist. Okay? <laughs> I mean, sounds on, like you him. Know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I have my core Democrat beliefs, which I've been adhering to since I was, I don't know, 20 years old, first got involved in politics, some of which are, uh, you know, are, are sort of non negotiable, if you would. Uh, the Republicans, on their other hand, I have conservative friends who have, you know, hardcore conservative beliefs in some areas that are probably not negotiable. But the trick is to find those areas where you are. And I use the repatriation of profits as, as, to me as a classic example. Um, you know, forget what the rate on higher incomes, lower incomes, all the different tiers they're talking about. Here's a piece of the puzzle that you could fix readily, re- relatively quickly, I think, if you get the right group of people in a room and say, let's figure out how to bring this money back. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, with your uh, past connections to Battle Creek, it seemed appropriate to chat with you, and I'm glad we had the chance. Well, thanks for having me, and, and uh, say hello to all my friends in Battle Creek there. All right, we'll do it. And uh, George Franklin, candidate for the 6th District U.S. House on the Democrat side. Of course, there'll be a whittling of those uh, candidates on the Democrat side, and they'll face whomever it is on the Republican side. Uh, whether it's Fred Upton or or somebody else. And so uh, a rather preliminary conversation today with George Franklin, but the announcement he made just about a week ago in this regard. So uh, that was the reason for our time today, and we'll talk again soon.